everyone, Richard Carlton here. Welcome. We have a special bonus today because uh, Andre uh, was in our event, and actually, I think he's on the YouTube side. So I got Brotherman from uh, Arkansas. Once again, I have to look at two different like chat windows. We don't have the YouTube one up here. I really need to put the YouTube one next to the the Twitch one, um, and because we're simulcasting in high definition to both. YouTube and Twitch so you can pick the service that you like. Once again, if you want to see what's going on, you want to see the details of the code and the screen, I suggest you select the window, make it high definition like 1080 and then make it full screen will make your life much easier. But uh, Andre did a sample file for us, kind of something he thought yesterday about the virtual list. So we are going to briefly pick up the conversation about virtual list. We're going to pick it up briefly because we want to show the awesome sample that one of you put together. So if you send us sample files and they're safe for work, right? Obviously, I say safe for work. It means they're not crazy, inappropriate things in the sample files. I say that with a smile because it happens. Um, then we'll be happy to show you what we got going. So, Calvin, I'm going to make you full screen. Why don't you walk us through? Uh, Calvin, what do we have here? And so this is the sample data uh, or sample file showing another uh, implementation of a virtual list. And what I really like about it is that it it it, it puts that virtual list together and shows that data in a in a way that's it's really similar, but th there's a few different techniques than what we sh saw yesterday. So first of all, we're looking at our this is our mock data. So this is our data set that's the uh, this isn't the virtual list. This is actually a list of eight thousand records. If we go over here though, and we're we're going to jump to the virtual lit, and let me just show you the uh, managed database. We'll you see there there uh, five fields for those demographics. I'm going to say, OK. Let's go over to virtual list. And you might say, what's the difference here? I see first name, last name, email, gender, state. It looks the same. But if we go into the uh, database, we see that all of these are calculations. And they're pulling, they're, they're getting the value out of a global variable called uh, dollar sign, dollar sign $VL for virtual list. And you might say, well, why would you do this? We could just look at it in this other place. But maybe the maybe we're not pulling the data from somewhere else. The 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 just for simplicity in this this example, they they have it look looking the same. Can you but show shows, show both layouts at the same time? So make another window, oh, yeah. and, and so that'll help a little bit with that, I think. And then yeah. and then go to layout mode, and you can see that just briefly. I think there. I think, yeah, it's confusing because we're using the same data, but re realistically, um, but, I mean, that's, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, you were about to go right there, so go ahead. Yeah, so, but what if we're pulling this data from some other place? I think uh, Andre was saying he, he pulls it from an SQL data source, so the, uh, and we'd want to see that in FileMaker, but, uh, but the data that is being displayed here isn't actually directly connected to this data on the left, it's actually referencing a global variable. So let's go over to our data viewer, tools, data viewer, and see what's current. And this is what's current, the, uh, this global variable called virtual list. And on the startup, we have a script that runs an execute uh, SQL function that pulls all this data. So let's go ahead and look at that, that, uh, that script and just see Calvin, it takes all the data yeah. from over here and it loads it into the global variable, right? Yes. Is that correct? All, yeah. Yep. All of this data into the uh, from from the sample records here into this variable. Okay. And then the virtual list references that global variable. But, but and, and so so it's we have the same order here, but we could have done any order or anything we wanted to. Remember yesterday we had that pivot table where we mm -hmm. could dynamically select the columns. He's laying the groundwork to do dynamic column selection. Really I think would be fun is to take the sample file and extend it a couple more steps to play with that. But um, yeah, so once again the data lives in here, stored in here. We create the um, we load it into the uh, global variable here, and then these are calculations that extract out. We could extract it in different columns. We could, you know, uh, you could do anything with it, right? So, right, uh, yeah. So, and and in this case, when we look at the database uh, definitions, we're seeing that. Uh, let's just look at this. Uh, uh, if we look at the yeah, walk walk us through this slowly because there's there's about three or four things here to learn. This is like this is like 15 minutes of learning just in this one little thing. 
So. Right. So you'll see that each of these calculations are identical with the exception that we're getting a different value. The get value is pointing to a different column in that data set. So let me go ahead and uh, out so we can kind of see the hierarchy here. So first we have a get value and it's getting the, the first value. And then we have the substitute. And what's the substitute doing? It's substituting a comma and replacing it with a uh, return, which is what we, we did in our sample yesterday. Uh, and, um, and then the then we have this other another get value, and here we are taking all of looking at all that whole block of data, the virtual list, and we're using the get record number. And I think this is where we ended our conversation yesterday, whether get record number or get record ID would work. Uh, we decided get record ID number would work, get record ID would not be reliable. And so you see there's we're using get the first get value. Is so getting the let me ask, let me back up for some people who yeah. are new. What is get value? Pop up get value. What the hell is get value? So get because because uh, substitute's pretty straightforward. Obviously, we're gonna have uh, some. We're gonna take one thing and substitute it for something else. So what is get value? Yeah, here we go. Yeah. So get value. We have a list of values. So that's our it, our virtual list is a list of values. So we're loading. Right. So we load the virtual entire virtual list in there, and then what happens? So so we have the entire virtual list here. And then we're saying get record number. And so the record number is wherever that record in that data set, whatever so record is. One, two, uh, three, four, five, whatever, right? Right. So it's telling us wh which one to grab there. So, then, so what is that? So that returns the entire horizontal row. Can you bring up the data view real quick? I just want to point this out because there's a like it says there's a lot of assumptions in here, and I want to make sure that we bring along the basic people. But if you bring up the virtual list, when when he runs that basic command here. It's grabbing an entire row, right? It depends mm -hmm. on which row is based upon number. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so it grabs the entire row. Then they, once he grabs that, then he does additional work inside of that, right? We're doing the substitute to substitute a return for each of the commas, right? So that, right. I, th I think it's important because like get value, for example, is on, once again, the certification test. And so it's obviously a confusing point. People forget about it. But get value allows you to go to a list, whether it has commas or not. It's a, a return delimiter, some sort of delimited list. Normally, it would be a return delimited list. And it's going to grab a specific row for you, which is really an important uh, thing to understand. So I mean, some of you, obviously, right. Elzo, Topcat, Dave, Dave1, Dave2, Johnny, uh, and, and Katarina, they probably already know this. But there are people here watching. We have quite a few people here. And they uh, don't necessarily know that. So that that calculation is important because it, it to unpack the conversation at several things. So right. So so the first step is to get where get the the script is or the the calculation is getting the value in the data set. The second step in that calculation is substituting out these commas to make another return delimited list that only includes data from one row, and then that that uh, final get value is grabbing whether it's the name, email, uh, gender, or state. So, th so there's, there's a few levels of, uh, in that calculation to parse out that data, which is similar to what we're doing in, in the other uh, option. It, but in this one, we are, because we know what the data is, we're, we're formatting our data such that it's always in the same order, first name, last name, email, et cetera. And so we can name those columns, and uh, so so it's really it's really neat how that's done. The other thing I like about this is how simple we're it, uh, this gathering data. So if you look at this uh, SQL state uh, state select statement, it's just select and the dollar sign means all of the fields from, and then we have the table occurrence mock data, and. Uh, and these, the, uh, these areas afterward, the first one tells us what to separate the, each, each uh, column of data with, which by default is commas. And, then, and since we're not specifying anything, it, it uses a comma. The second one is saying how to separate each, uh, each row 
which by default is a return. Since we're not specifying anything else, it's saying return. And then the other two are find criteria, which we aren't using at all. Uh, I'll just go ahead and delete those. And uh, if I copy this, let's go ahead and copy this and see what happens, how we're formatting this data in, uh, in how it comes out in the data viewer. So I'm going to say evaluate. And you see it pulled up all of that data. And I didn't even tell it which, I, the star just says all the columns, bring them all out. And, uh, and I'm pointing it to the table occurrence that I want. I can change this, though, if I want to use a pipe instead. Let's change that. You'll notice each column of data is now separated by a pipe. I could say and have it two returns. And now, there, now the, each row of data is separated by two returns. So it's a, a really slick way that they're, we're pulling in all of, set, getting all that data up. In, uh, in this, using an SQL statement. If you happen to use this and try this out, uh, be careful. Uh, try it out on some local file first. If you use this, it's grabbing everything. If you use this on a hosted file with 100,000 records, it would probably, uh, it, it, it would take a long time to evaluate. Yeah. We, uh, you'd also, you might put just a where in there, maybe where state equals. Uh, California or something like that, and then you'll see. Now we, we only see the people from California. So, so where? So, so yeah. Ahead. So so Calvin knows the SQL, and 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 I think probably ought to do a session just on the SQL and and this specific, this specific, like this conversation right here is an entire conversation. I think we ought to just schedule that, um, Calvin. And so those of you who want to vote on that, let us know if you think it would be useful to do this because Calvin knows this, and there are good uses of SQL and FileMaker, and then there are things it just doesn't do, and then also areas that you probably should avoid, like you know, a million records on a remote uh, solution. Uh, yeah, SQL with join. Yeah, so people want to know about uh, using SQL to create ad hoc uh, join, ad hoc relationships yeah, we, to get data. we can do that. Yeah, why don't we plan on that, Calvin? I, I know there's some other, remember the, uh, the SQL Explorer that guys put together, those guys down there, or seed code, someone put that together. Uh, do you still use the SQL Explorer? Does it still work? Uh, it it still works. I haven't, uh, and it's it's if you're if you're new to using SQL and FileMaker, it's a great place to start because it it shows you how the uh, it shows you how the, the those those queries are put together, and it can give you also really uh, 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 it shows you like a fragile code version version of it where it's all spelled out, and it also gives you a calculation version where everything. It, where it's using uh, functions and stuff to generate that name, so that if you change a, a, a table name or table occurrence ah. name or field name, it doesn't break it. Yeah, so there, that's called in, that's of, called indirection. We'll have to have a conversation about indirection and that that kind of stuff too, as well. Um, that's a filemaker -y kind of term, but yeah. Okay, so real quick, and then just as a cap for those who are wondering about this, like why don't we use SQL for everything? Okay, filemaker fundamentally one is not a SQL database. They built a limited dictionary into FileMaker so it could understand some, and I put it with a little quote, some SQL capabilities. Primarily, the very short version is that it can read data and display data. It cannot edit or write data or delete data. So it's basically a reading-only tool. However, what's cool about it is that you can, art uh, through that SQL statement, create a temporary relationship where it extracts data out and then it's the the relationship is just like temporary in its mind and it, once it gets the data it, it it breaks the relationship down so normally in a report and file maker you have to go to a relation and, and connect everything well, what if you wanted to do something ad hoc really quick well if you knew the sql for it then you could temporarily establish the relationship in the sql statement read the data you want and then and put it into a variable probably is the most common thing people do, and then they play with it from there. And then, but once that SQL, uh, SQL that statement's over, then that relationship poof goes away. It was just a very temporary transient sort of thing. So understand that FileMaker fundamentally doesn't run SQL faster than it would run FileMaker. If you did a find, if you do a select and FileMaker and read data, and you do a find and FileMaker and read data, FileMaker technically is faster because when it does SQL, the FileMaker engine, and I know this because I talked to the engineer who wrote this stuff. 
And he was like, I don't know. He goes, he goes I don't understand why everyone thinks SQL is the uh, holy grail. Because it has to translate the SQL to filemaker language, do it, then bring it back and translate it back to SQL. So there's a delay in it. However, if you need to do something like this ad hoc relationship, it can make things, it makes your life much faster. And you can simplify the relational diagram. So people say, they always ask me when we're doing training, why does it matter? Why is it important? And I need to articulate that, right? Not just it's here. It's here. I got some. I got some new engineers, and I was wrestling with them today, and maybe they're listening today. Um, I got some brand new, you know, and they, and they'll be like, "Oh, there's SQL. Why would we use it? They don't care why they would use it. They just think it's cool, and they'll play with it just to play with it, which is fine. But part of understanding the tools, like yesterday, we had the tools wherever my tools went. Like today's tool is a roll of tape, another tool, right? And so. Where would you use this and why would you use it? And what's the appropriate use? And if this is the only tool you have, which is not a good thing, then this becomes a hammer and a wrench and something to beat the neighbor's dog with when it won't stop barking in the middle of the night. I mean, whatever, you get the idea. I mean, I love the neighbor's dog, but it doesn't bark most of the time. So, but you get the idea. If all you have is a hammer, the term is if all you have is a hammer, then everything looks like a nail. So you have to have a assortment of tools and use the right tool in the right case. And SQL definitely has a right place to be used. So this training hour has been sponsored by fmtraining.tv. And so we have a complete bundle, which includes all our tools and a copy of FileMaker. And then we also have the video only training. You can get $50 off of these by emailing us at support at RC Consulting. And the tech support team there, the coaching team, happy to answer your questions. They will give you the coupon so you can get either one of these uh, $50 off. Uh, save some money on that. So once again, reminder to keep your training bundles up to date and uh, feel free to uh, get a discount on these if you want. Email support at rcconsulting.com, support rcconsulting.com. Uh, if you have a question or if you want a $50 off coupon, that way you can show your support for the channel. All right. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Collected the quarterback, great read, good patience, more importantly, great job up front protecting this quarterback to give you a chance, and that's all you can ask for. Trying to rally down 10, 925 to go here in the fourth. Short motion by Amendola from the left. Brady takes the shot, goes snap, stands in, throws it left for Amendola, reaches up and snaps a high throw and lands inside the 10. Rolling to the 9. Ball slightly behind him, again he makes the grab.